Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another Super Tease video. In this one, we're going to be breaking down the current PvP meta, which specializations are performing really well, and trying to make some predictions as to potential changes that could be coming into the future for the classes overall. And if you want to be staying up to date with news related to World of Warcraft, then make sure to smash that subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, obviously, 11.0.5 was our most recent major patch, and they had a major kind of class tuning adjustment to beast mastery hunters like an emergency tuning adjustment that came through uh, that we saw major nerfs to shadow priests and beast mastery hunters we can see those specializations dropping off now when we went into the arena world championship which was the most recent competitive format tournament had a blast casting it by the way hope you guys enjoyed it as well uh, we noticed that shadow priest still had very high representation at least in north america basically zero in europe aside from potentially the gauntlet i don't even think the gauntlet Gauntlet had a huge amount of Shadow Priest representation. So it's interesting to see that divergence uh, between the regions specifically, because I think Shadow Priest still holds in a pretty strong position, but you can see that it has fallen quite a lot. Now it is down to 5.59 when it was up at 16.37 percent representation it's almost a 10 percent drop in about the last month for shadow but i think it's in a much more kind of like fair place uh than it was previously i think the nerfs were like at an appropriate level because we're bringing it down from here and now it's kind of in the mix with every specialization right the ideal game would be like these are a perfect line all fused together but you, you want to get them you know within range of each other all this kind of staggeringly high performing line is obviously something that needs attention um and when they did nerf beast mastery hunters which i'm not sure if it was here i think i feel like it was, it was closer to here i don't even know if they included it on this graph you can see it kind of fell off i think this has got to be around when they nerfed kill shot and it's falling off but i think beast mastery hunter is still in a really good position honestly so i think that their approach to kind of minor tweaks uh onto these specializations is taking the game in a really good direction as far as class balance is concerned we did see some surprises um with things like ret paladin uh ret paladin actually kind of has been increasing over time it's been climbing even though it hasn't got like a huge amount of t attention i think it's because of <coughs> I think it is because of Hammer of Light, choking on a piece of popcorn while I'm talking about Rep Paladins here. This is maybe the karma of the Rep Paladins are sneaking into my throat. Like, you better not say anything bad about Rep Paladin or something here. But Rep Paladin has been climbing up in, as far as representation. We did see it in the AWC and actually came very close to actually beating ILTU, which had that huge miracle run through the entire gauntlet. That was in the first round with Kara, who is a BlizzCon champion Rep Paladin. They took them all the way to game five, and in their game five, they kind of made some blunders that if they didn't make, maybe they actually would have beaten ILTU, and you have a completely different universe where a Rep Paladin possibly makes it uh, into the top four instead. But it's definitely looking a lot better, even despite changes um, not really significantly happening to it. And Arms Warrior has been increasing. It's been on the up um, as well even despite it being more weak defensively and you know weaknesses as far as mobility is concerned and i have to say out of my own personal experience i've been loving my arms warrior it's like easily my i love it it's the most fun uh spec for me i love playing demolish um even though you know a lot of all very high rated warriors going slayer I'm trying to find a way to make demolish work on my 2400 challenge for that specialization moving forward. Um, I could see a world where switching between them is actually the most ideal. I really like demolish against double melee DPS, but against double caster, I can see Slayer being definitely a, a cut ahead as far as that's concerned because it's just so hard to actually get a double caster to sit in a spot where you can fully channel the demolish without it just being totally disregarded um, by mobility. But you can see like all these specializations are starting to have an uptick. Frost Mage is constantly in flux as far as going up and down, which is good. It's really these specializations at the bottom, you know, that we've really got to pay attention to. Things like augmentation, right? Like augmentation is just completely skirting the bottom, not really getting like any attention to it. And Marksmanship Hunter is kind of skirting really close to augmentation right now. Like this is a huge gap from 0.4 to like 11 percent right um between these specializations so as as far as like predictions i'm thinking like marksmanship hunter definitely needs some love it needs some buffs i'm thinking like fire mage could even use some buffs although this one's a bit harder as far as direction because i think it's kind of more defense oriented that it probably needs some buffs i've seen a couple of fire mages and the damage doesn't seem completely terrible um relative to a lot of other specializations um, we see actually <laughs> death knight i think blood uh, we're, we're, let me just scroll down here i don't think i have tanks included on this do i let's see 
Oh, uh, maybe they don't even include tanks. Oh my god, I wish that they did. They don't include tanks on this graph because I bet blood actually has a higher representation than a lot of these DPS specializations that are kind of like coming in at the bottom. Specifically for shuffle, I bet like blood has like a higher representation than fire or marksmanship hunter, which is just like a huge outcry that those specializations really need some attention. Um, we saw a, lo a lot of specs are just increasing, right? Like, look at this increase: five percent on arms, five percent on beast mastery, five percent on red, two percent on enhance, two percent on fury. Like, this is a healthy you know, gain for all specializations as far as increase. Uh, but obviously some of them are smaller than others like Demon Hunter and Destro. I could see these being specializations that receive some type of buff um, on the reset specifically. Uh, Frost Death Knight possibly, but I think Unholy is likely more of an outlier at least um, than Frost at the moment. Arcane seems to be kind of just naturally healing. I just think that Arcane is harder to play than Frost. Frost is a lot more instant cast damage. It's a bit tankier. Um, Arcane takes a little bit more finesse, and typically the specs that are finesse over brute force are less represented, especially in solo shuffle situation. Um, and given that Mage has been historically pretty weak in shuffle, um, its numbers have been decent even despite that. Uh, Balance Druid, everybody was talking about like how, how it's so strong, it's so powerful, and it's so funny with Boomkin because... When I put it on S tier, people are like, you're just saying that because you're really good at it. And then when I put it on B tier, people are like, are you delusional? It's like, this is the best spec in the game. I just don't think I can win. I legitimately just don't think I can win. Uh, I think that Corky played like an absolute legend in the first round against Echo to 3-0 them um, in that upper stage. But then when they actually got into the grand finals, they cleaned up their kicks, um, focused him down. You could start to see the weaknesses um, and the frustrations that are created with Balanced Druid. Uh, at the moment, if you got a rogue that's babysitting, you're able to fake the kicks, you're a god. If you can't fake the kicks, you don't have a babysitter, you're probably dead on the ground. So it's it's a mixed bag. Um, I think, honestly, bringing down some of its burst and bringing up its defense would be healthier for all skill levels of Boomkin. Because at the highest level, if you're really talented and you know how to line everything up, you just absolutely destroy people with damage. But on the low end, survivability is so low that you don't really get any time to actually learn how to do the setup properly. So some type of exchange in that regard would likely be healthy for the specialization as a whole something like destro lock though i think it's just like buffs it could buff it defensively and offensively i think it's just it's just underperforming a little bit um in demonology i think is doing great now although again i think the main complaints for demonology are kind of like pet ai trying to clean up pets so that if they're summoned behind pillars they're able to actually get in line of sight and actually cast abilities without being totally useless uh because that's definitely a problem i think it's been a problem for demonology for a really long time that some of its pet ai just like Summon in a tyrant and it just doesn't attack for a while it just kind of chills there um something like that but that's more of like a bug fix not necessarily just like a a buff or a nerf type of situation for it um we saw one subtlety rogue in north america calvish pulled it out and it looked really good when he played it and i was really surprised to not see waz play subtlety actually in the grand finals against a preservation evoker because prior to this patch he would have played subtlety 100 percent of the time in that situation it would have completely owned him um, so I, I was very surprised that he didn't. And then watching Calvish play it, it made me even more surprised that they didn't try uh, Subtlety Rogue for like even a game in that matchup against the Boomkin Rogue. So Subtlety's in this weird spot um, where I feel like it is good, but again, it's like Arcane. It's the finesse spec um, of Rogue. So it's going to have less, less representation um, if Assassination is able to do you know relevant damage, which right now it definitely is, especially in solo shuffle situations. So it's probably going to sit around in the same spot, I would imagine, moving forward. I don't imagine seeing like too many changes to Frost. I honestly don't even know if they should nerf anything anymore or if it's just buff the week at this point, because honestly, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. As far as game balance, you know, there's MMR, there's queue time issues, but as far as game balance, like I'm, I'm starting to have a lot of fun with the game. So I don't, I don't really want to see like a spec that's doing well right now get kind of ruined. I feel like this is like, there's always a time where you've got to assess the ladder and you got to be like, okay, is this a time where we're going to buff every, the weak? Or are we going to nerf the strong? Um, when you have classes that are invincible and don't die, you got to kind of nerf the strong because if you buff everyone else to be immortal, the game never ends. If you got specs that can kill you in like one global, yeah, if you buff everybody to kill everybody in one global, then the game is probably not that great. Those are like the extremes, right? Of where you can't really buff everybody up. You got to nerf those targets down. Um, and I feel like the game is in a spot where it, it's getting pretty healthy. It's getting really fun. I like the overall representation, especially because this early in an expansion, usually the early stages of an expansion are just complete blowout as far as game balance is concerned. If you've played any of the expansions previously uh, for World of Warcraft and considering the fact that they have to balance against Mythic Plus, Raid, Battlegrounds, 
and arenas like all of this stuff like simultaneously with kit and talent and class design overall i think they actually do a remarkable job um balancing the game given the fact that like i feel like that should be an impossible aim right like and this isn't me just like shilling out or something like that like literally it's really good considering all the variables and constraints and considerations that need to be made in this type of situation now i do it's not to say that i don't think it would benefit if they completely separated everything um so for example dungeon balance if they had a dungeon tuning knob um separate from raids for example i i think that they'd be able to nail the balance a lot better um with tools like that but obviously that would require a lot of tuning a lot of tuning your class would work differently and I've, I've seen the criticisms towards that type of strategy but my personal opinion and it's not like i'm gonna die on a hill for it or anything like that is just that you would have to separate the numbers right if you try and balance it for everything nobody's really gonna really be happy um someone's gonna be upset and you see that in social media when it comes to mythic plus um all the time as well as pvp although most competitive players that are active like this like to complain a lot too but i think the game is actually moving in a really good direction as far as game balance if we can get some mmr in some consistency um between battleground blitz and arena i've been really loving just simultaneously queuing both at the same time now and then you can kind of just like bounce between them or even getting some two versus two going while i'm in, in a solo shuffle queue this is this is how i've been kind of dealing with any potential queue times because some sometimes the queues are just fire there's popping right away other times i'm sitting around maybe like 15 minutes 20 minutes um in that type of situation so i think if they keep the game balance going like this mmr starts scaling up a bit we see some like new exciting news for like 11.1.7 um or 11.0.7 sorry uh and then 11.1 like i think that we're likely going to be bringing the numbers back for this um specifically for healers though the the balance gets a lot different so i really think that we need to do some buffs here I think that Holy Pal Holy Priest needs like a little buff. Resto Druid needs probably a medium level buff. Resto Shaman needs a buff. Because this is gonna be the number one thing that improves Q times. We look at these three lines or four lines that are floating down at the bottom and look at these guys. These guys are happy, they're having fun, they're chilling. These guys are like, Yeah, this is kind of suffering. We we would like a little bit of help. You know, a little stimulus package. Bring up some of these guys here on the bottom. AWC's over now. Focus on the ladder, get everybody else here. You don't have to worry about tournament integrity and, and things like that. Um, I think these guys need to get bumped up. We can help the queue times out in that regard, create some more activity for healers also. Maybe somebody who plays a Feral Druid's like, hey, Rest of Druid got buffed and I'll try it now or something as an alt spec. And then now there's more lobbies happening because there's more healers. This is like single-handedly the most important thing that happens as far as changes. If there are going to be any more changes for 11.0.7 is that the, uh, the healers at the bottom here get some buffs. Whether they're very small to medium, doesn't matter. They de they need some buffs. We got to get these healers up here feeling as good as these guys do because these healers are really fun to play at the moment. They're really fun. And then these guys are just like a couple of tuning adjustments away from being really fun, I think. Obviously, Resto Shaman has the limitations of its, its kit. I'd love to see animation updates for things like uh, Earthen Wall Totem. Um, so it's more clear and defined as far as lines for players um, to stay inside of it. Something like that would be awesome. Um or even like a sticky earthen wall totem where it like follows the player around. You put it on a player and it follows them with a circle radiating out, radiating out or something like that uh, would be really cool too. Um, but yeah, the healer balance like this, this is uh, this is something that I think definitely needs to be looked at as far as tuning. DPS balance again, I would like it to be because I think uh, like the game is really close. I swear it's really close to like everything feeling really awesome and having like something about it that feels special and cool uh while being competitively viable on the ladder i think it's really close so i'd love to see like another tuning pass with some of those adjustments um and i like i think it's going to be a blast as far as all that is concerned but this this is my my update my thoughts on the current state of the game uh let me know in the comments down below what you think thank you very much for watching the video and i will see you in the next one